school board to order. It is 5.38 p.m. And we'll start with Pledge of Allegiance, led by Mr. Coon. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adjustments to the agenda. Review and approve board minutes for March 19, 2018. Positive, but I think Kristen's last name might need an extra W in it. Yes. It's Swart. Swart Wout. So T S W O U T. Let's see. So there's a second W in it. S W A R T W O U T is her last name. Yeah. And I was also in attendance. Yeah, you have Margot twice. It's not a big deal. She's that. I cloned myself. She's she's, she's <laughs> that much presence. of a presence. Yeah. Probably was going around the table and I <laughs> circled around again. Circle. Sorry. Um, and then uh, I lost it when I went back up to Kristen's name. Um, let me see if I can find it again. Oh yeah, yeah. I had another question. Mm, it's down on these. So it asks about the teacher roster. I think this is 9B under <coughs> the first one, under I of 9B. It says Dana Quadro's position is now, in a sh now shown as to be hired. Um, I just wondered, we didn't pass till later in the meeting. But yeah, I think there, it's out of order. Out of order because we, we had the request for the leave of absence ahead of the teacher roster so that we would have the, the space on the teacher roster. So Do you want me to strike that then? Well, maybe, maybe I... wouldn't help by the fact that I walked in halfway through the meeting. I know that we moved. I do remember we moved some stuff around, around so that it came in the right order. Uh, maybe I actually. Okay, so 9A was stricken because we didn't have it. 10A was moved. Follow 9B. And that's in number three, the yeah. adjustments to agenda, it says okay. number two. And then 9E, follow 10A. And somehow that moved. Because what we did was we moved Dana's appointment as assistant principal of and his request for a year's leave of absence and then we approve the So we just need to adjust. Can I write it the way you just described yeah, it? Yeah, I probably just write it the way I described it. Would be, I think. Okay. Something to the effect that the, the minutes are incorrect in the correct order and this is what actually happened. Make a motion that we approve the minutes from the Monday, March 19th, 2018 meeting as amended. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 
Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Communication and public comments. Policies, no. superintendent's report. Well, Rick and I went up to Barry on Friday. A whole herd of us went up to Barry. On yes, Friday. a whole herd. Represented from each board. A couple of people from Westminster. Um, my sense was that it went pretty well. We didn't really let them get a word in it twice. That was you know, strategy. Uh, <coughs> and um, they didn't really question us closely about anything about our proposal. Which kind of they didn't really question anything about it, did they? No, really. Interesting. Which, This was like an AOE board? Right? No, it was Rebecca Holcomb down to her last she hour, literally hours. Three <laughs> hours <laughs> yeah. of service. She actually came. She did. Wow. I'm a little blown away actually. By that. Was, was, was that her office or was that? That is where she works. Uh, and then um, Donna Bruce Savage was the real independent. The, she's an attorney and works for the AOE and has been managed. She is also the attorney advisor for the Vermont State Board of Education. So <coughs> she's been involved in the Act 46 yeah. um, applications right from the beginning, and she's worked with us through everything we've done. She's really great, actually. She and then Brad James, who is one of the money people that works at the AOA, but uh, not the head of the So the next step then is they will be making the determination for the everything statewide come June 1st, right? No, uh, that's, that's what this, they kept that's saying. What saying. <laughs> I didn't hear anything about you. It sounded like it was still months away. It was they kept saying over the next several months, and I guess June is a June couple June months away. But that was what was in the letter. Yeah, it was June first. Yeah, I think they're trying to stick to that. But then there are going to be several more meetings, uh, opportunities for feedback. This time with the State Board of Education. So. I think our goal is an early win here, <laughs> you know, if, because we won't have to have much more feedback if they say, yeah, we we agree there's nothing much that can be done with Wyndham Northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing they did, I guess Rebecca asked, or maybe it was Donna, was, do you are there other districts that you <coughs> consider yourselves part of uh, the larger community of, mm -hmm. that to be part of your community? And we said, no. So, uh, you know, we're not part of Springfield, we're not part of Chester, we're not part of Leland and Gray, and we're not part of Brattleboro. Mm -hmm. so. Well, thank you, Rick, for or, representing Rappingham. Yeah. Thank you, Chris, for going out. Sure. Everyone who went felt it was a pretty easy, well played, you know, all the way around. Uh, and other news, there's tons of news, but let's keep it short. So I think all the schools have now had all of your schools have had s the safety reviews from the, that the governor commissioned. And it was, it's good to have another pair of eyes and go through each school and emergency plans and how things are laid out. I notice you have, Keith, bright black numbers by every door. New numbering, which I believe measuring. are <coughs> the result yeah. of that. So yeah. one of the things, Matches for example, 
was it um, BF Police Department that were you? Yeah. You? Yeah. <coughs> Said, you know, we need better marked room numbers. Yeah. So, room numbers are exterior door numbers. Well, that's another that's thing. That's another, that's another thing. Exterior door numbers is right. right. I think all of us need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah, then law enforcement has maps yeah. of the schools so that they you know, they know where to go. If there's an issue, where to go. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, principals, I, I didn't ask them to bring a written report because you're having this extra meeting. Yeah. Um, has there been anything on the handicapped parking space? <laughs> Cameron and I still have to get together on that um, and you know, go from there. Okay. But we have gotten some information through the town and through my counties. Edie's not here. WNESU board. It met. It met. Um, if you're not aware, you were elected to a position. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't at the meeting. <laughs> yeah, you were elected to a lot of positions. Was I really? No. Um, no. I said I would do the treasurer again because Edie and Rhonda and Marlene were. I wouldn't tell you're the chair, too. Yeah. I tried to nominate him for vice chair, thinking that was the position he just held. It was. I, was I had both oh, vice had chair. Both. I was vice chair and um, treasurer. But before. somebody, but Ed stepped up for vice chair. Good. All right, so. I wasn't going completely crazy. I mean, the vice chair is a pretty easy role. Like, I had to chair a meeting once last year after we figured out that I was actually the vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> so, David Clark is my new chair. Mm -hmm. um, and the big item of business for us was the teacher rosters, really, because it's, we're about to issue contracts. That's about it. And committees. I don't think we have any committees to report anything. Not at the moment. Okay. We can move to unfinished business for discussion or action. The other Rick can tell us about the pellet boiler. And I would just hop in right now for folks in TV land that the documents that we're all looking at on our computer are available to you by going to the WNESU website, clicking on the right hand side on the Rockingham School Board documents and clicking on this meeting which is 4 to 18 and you will see all the documents we're looking at at home. So I'm going to just give the broad overview because that's all I'm good for here um, <coughs> which is that um, <coughs> this Wilson Engineering, who we've been working with through the Wyndham Regional Commission, is that? Um, no, we had uh, actually started working with them prior to uh, oh, okay. learning about okay. it. Yep. So um, it turns out that it's kind of complicated. Uh, and for them to produce these um, plans and quotes and engineering studies, um, we are recommending that um, this contract, which is on the drawing, that task one of it to be approved, the $3,500. And now I'm handing it to Rick. I'm going to be quiet. Yeah, so, um, right, like so Chris said, that's, uh, they proposed three tasks, but you need to do task one and then decide if you want to move forward, and that's where task two and three obviously would follow. Uh, task one basically, uh, 
it, they will evaluate the system, give an estimate of the project cost for an option of installing replacement pellet boilers or boiler. Uh, that's something I have to look at, whether we can just replace it with just one instead of replacing both. Just put one pellet boiler in. Uh, or uh, not go with pellets, the uh, possibility of putting in a backup oil boiler, so you still have a backup boiler, which is not the worst idea, um, because uh, that is the one thing that we had with the new system. We had a pellet boiler and a backup oil boiler. So, uh, Or um, just sticking with the one oil boiler, and you would still need controls upgrades. Um, and some repiping of the system regardless. So uh, that's what task one would be, and that's the $3,500 that Chris mentioned. Um, and so are they gonna, are they gonna provide, so it doesn't, I don't read it here anything about <coughs> them suggesting an oil, uh, the, the, an oil boiler as an alternative. Are they gonna actually provide like some cost comparisons to pellet versus oil and maybe some like ROI on uh, He did or the give other. us some cost comparison. Uh, <coughs> those were at the last, you have those. Right. right? That's what I gave you at the last meeting. Right. So they've already uh, done that piece. This is a, uh, this is a study basically to see what it would cost to replace the current pellet boilers with new pellet boilers or pellet boiler, uh, or no pellet boilers, add a backup oil boiler, or just stick with the one oil boiler you got and do the basic repiping that they had originally planned on doing that we had spoken about, and possible uh, additional controls for that as well. And the cost, a cost estimate for all that to base your decision on. So that would just basically be stage firing the existing system, mainly? Which is what we're doing. We're running, that's what we did this past winter. We're running off the one, the oil boiler. Mm -hmm. Yep, the existing oil boiler. So would the Wyndham grant also cover a portion of the task one? They don't, unfortunately. They cover, uh, pretty much uh, materials. They would cover 50% of a new boiler, 50% of labor to install, uh, not labor to install, sorry, um, materials to install, yeah. They don't cover labor or they don't cover engineering costs, yeah. So Rick, is the, am I correct that the idea would be after task one is done? Yes. The board would then have enough information to determine whether they want to go forward with the replacing the pellet Correct. boilers or yep. not. That is what I had uh, questioned Tom on and, uh, and based upon the information he's given me back, uh, he feels that that should be enough for the board to decide to go forward with the project that they decide to. And Move ahead with task number two. Are as part of this going to be looking into any trade in on the old boilers? Is, have you thought of this? like with the old boilers? Do we just like send them for scrap metal or are pretty much? How old is it? <laughs> Not very old. Not five very years. Old. Yeah. yeah. You don't feel like there's any remarket value in those? Um, we can, that, that, that is a feeling I've gotten. I mean, I can pursue that a little further uh, while, you know, if, they, if you approve this task one, if they're looking into all that, I will ask them about seeing what there is out there. I would, yeah, I would, I would think when we get to the point of like, Getting quotes, uh, we should ask for some sort of a trade. Or something on them. I don't, you're in the business. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't think that <clears throat> they would offer trade in, but it's going to have some sort of value, even if you just put it up as like a surplus auction item, like uh -huh. the 
the highway department does with equipment when they're done with it. Yeah, it's going to have, have being five that. years old, it's going to have some sort of value other than just scrap. If it was 20 to 30 years old, then it's probably just scrap value. I don't know. Well, part of the trick is getting it out. That is a up. trick. Right. Yep. It would have to be completely dismantled. And, uh, wow, it's going to be sectioned to get it out. Absolutely. It was yeah. brought into a much larger doorway when it was brought in there, oh. and that doorway has since been. Yeah, well, that up. starts to change things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can get it out, you can have it for scrap. <laughs> okay. Yeah, unfortunately, we're kind of almost at that point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Rick on task one? It's unfortunate that we have to pay in order to find out. Yes. What? Yeah. It is. I think you could. I um, agree. Include in your motion using some of your reserve fund to make the payments. improvements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be a great idea. <laughs> that's what it's there for, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> what it's there for. In the capital reserve. Do we have money left in? Yes. This year? Yeah. You have. You do. Yeah. Plenty for this project. I don't have the total. Right here. Well, I guess I'll make a motion that we um, approve the WES contract for doing task one for providing recommendations for sizing and cost estimates on the pellet boiler and using funds from the capital reserve for this. And authorize the superintendent oh, to sign on the board's behalf. That too. So task one is actually quoting out this and then mm -hmm. you know, estimating the cost and then task two would be the engineering work for the Right, the drawings. Right. So, so we only right. want to approve task one. At right. This point. Right. We want to wait to see what they come back with. Then exactly. Yeah. Right. And then after task two was done, then we would be looking at. That's when the quotes would be delivered for the actual work. We'd have to go out to bid We'd after to that. To bid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any more discussion or questions on Margot's motion? And so, can you repeat your motion, please? Yeah. Sorry, me. You can report. You can. Yes, it was. That way, we'll know that it was. <laughs> you made me sound good, right? <laughs> uh, I, I have uh, Margot give a move to approve the WES contract for Task One recommendations for cost estimates using funds from the Capital Reserve Fund, and ask the superintendent to sign on the board's behalf. Excellent. And if there's no more discussion. All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? The eyes have it. Task one. <coughs> done. Okay. School board vacancy. Still got one as far as I know. Still got one. I did have one person who said he was interested and was going to send a letter and I'm not sure what happened but Chris is not quite re has not received a letter yet. Um, so if anybody out there in TV land is interested in joining this illustrious board you can contact Mr. K Mr. Kibbe at the Supervisory Union office or anyone here for more information on what you need to do to do that. Anything you want to add to that? No. Anything you want to add to that? Thank you, Rick. You got it. Thanks, Rick. Yep. Have a good night. See you. New business for discussion action. Alternative structure, school board actions. So... Now comes the hard part. Um, <coughs> so I am starting to go around the, the boards with <coughs> what you agreed to back in December. Uh -huh. uh, so that document I put in the drive here, your section of the Act 46. Um, actually in two pieces. One is the actions to strengthen the existing governance structure. That one starts off with um, 
supporting the SU, the administrative team to find additional efficiencies. Uh, that, that's not too much of a heavy lift. The second one is the S, the school SUI food service, which we're working on. So that's going to come. That's going to happen. For my carry, that's the high school too, right? Correct. Yeah, that's the whole Camp Westminster. So we're <coughs> plugging away at that. Um, staff development and other program for the SU, that's really kind of a budgeting discussion um, when you get around to that for next year. Um, and I'm skip down to the last couple, the out of the task force to study out of school programs. I'm thinking that's something you would do in the fall. School is in session again. And you've already reviewed the I IFR report. So skipping back up, we're left with this two things. One, the biannual meetings of the Bellis Wells Union High School Board. And the other board. And the other boards. And I can tell you that, uh, <coughs> so I talked about this with the high school board at their last meeting, and we scheduled a meeting. And it's right on your meeting night, actually, June, Monday, June 4th. So it's kind of, it's a, it would be a rocking and board meeting if you were going to have one. At the high school, 6.30. So we got that one covered pretty well. And I think you're going to want to have all of your administrators come as well. Sorry. <coughs> Luckily, it's on the normal night anyway, not an additional night. And did they pick a time? 6.30 at the high school. So now you're down to this goal setting activities actions checklist, which is something you need to decide how much you want to utilize it. Um, really, ideally, um, it would be starting to talk about goal setting or perhaps a retreat if you wanted to have one, which you may or may not, <coughs> um, to do some goal setting. And that's another document I put on the drive. It's Appendix G. That's the piece out of the alternative structure. Um, so, At some point, uh, I mean, the idea of this document is that you're in a yearly kind of cycle of goal setting. Mm -hmm. um, that are informed by the superintendent's SU goals. So since we don't have those yet, <coughs> I, I don't think you're quite there, but... Um, we're going to have to talk about them at the next SU meeting. Um, because we also need to approve a continuous improvement plan for the SU. So that's kind of where we sit. I'm not sure there's anything to do right now. I just kind of want to make you aware of what's coming at you. Yeah. Um, and we, we can preview coming year challenges pretty quickly right now. We have a new superintendent coming on board. <laughs> we, new director. We have a new director of special services. We have a, a we're short a board member, so that's our kind of our top three challenges right, for the coming year. And implementing a whole new food service. And implementing a whole new food service. <coughs> the food service alone would be. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of changes happening at once. So there, we can check that one off. Okay. So I think, 
to do. We'll be up, we'll be up to May, so you know, maybe you want to talk about board goals in May. Maybe you want to, you could devote a, and it might be as simple as you just <laughs> outlined there, but <clears throat> you could devote a meeting to discussing and adopting board goals that, you know, maybe didn't have all the other business. Yeah, that's, kind of that's probably in the way. for the best, because then, you know, unless you folks want to suffer through it with us, or maybe give us some guidance. I don't know how much. They're involved. They're going to carry out your your plans. So. If I were them, I'd want to. Yeah. Then, um, I don't want to do that. Make sure we I know it's often difficult for people to get here earlier, since our meetings are typically at 5.30. Could we try to do one in May? Even for, uh, I think we could hammer it out maybe a half hour session if we were just focused on that and do it at 5 instead of do it at 5 before our regular meeting. Maybe, or devote your regular meeting to that. Try to We could try to clear the agenda off uh, more or less. Okay. I, I'm open to either of those. You and I can. Yeah. I'll work that out with you as we get closer. And people could propose goals so that yeah. in advance so that you know, start with a draft. Yeah. Send them to Margo. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them to the town hall, the theater. So would that be our? Would that we target the first meeting in May for that, or the second, or the? Mm -hmm. we gonna have? We might have an appointment or two. You have a nurse you need to phone. You have a language arts teacher, mm -hmm. but that's it. Yeah, we could shoot for the first. The first meeting in May. Yeah, I think you want to go into that meeting at the high school with your board goals. Mm -hmm. There's no action to take on that, then. We'll just no. Shall we move on? Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any thoughts on the alternative structure of actions? Firearms resolution. <coughs> so, um, one of the Westminster board members was given a copy of the document that Brattleboro drafted a week or two ago. Um, <coughs> I don't know if you want to do something similar. Um, there are now actually three bills that have to do with firearms protections. S, um, S55 is the one that um, got a lot of press last week. which was the universal background checks, raise the purchasing age to 21, ban bump stocks, and high capacity magazines. So that's been 
My understanding of this is that that's been passed by both houses. There are differences between the two uh, chambers. The governor has said he will sign them, but the differences have to be worked out. Then there are two others, which um, are really kind of very important for threats in schools. Uh, H-422 gives police officers the option of temporarily seizing guns from someone cited for domestic violence. And S-221, Senate has passed unanimously. Uh, allows place to get a court order to remove guns from people who are deemed by a judge to be an extreme risk to themselves or others. And these are both expected to be approved pretty soon. So, and maybe, I don't know, maybe they even were last week. I'm in reading a seven days article, mm -hmm. and it's really from last week. So I don't know if you want to do anything or not. I think if you do, I think we could steal some of the wording from that Brattleboro resolution and sort of update it to make it more urging the governor and the Senate and House leadership to get on it and pass these bills. And, uh, but that is up to you because you are the board. Thoughts? Um, um, I guess I am in support of that. Um, I don't have much to say on it. <laughs> their letter, the first thing I would pull out is I think I would pull out um, citing a specific firearm like the AR-15. I yeah. it was just more generic, yeah. like, you know, someone from entering our school with a firearm or weapon, maybe even weapon. Um, we could have someone bring a grenade to school one day. Not a live one. <laughs> Not a live Not one. Not a live one. Several <laughs> years ago. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree with your statement there about not citing specific. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, going paragraph by paragraph. Um, paragraphs okay or do you it starts off as you are undoubtedly aware schools have become a target of mass shootings Vermont is not immune to this do you want to put your own preamble onto it would like to preamble one. Right. <coughs> Add a sentence on to that. That's, that's something about the Rockingham School Board would like to urge to take action on. Well, they have further down, they kind of say the same thing, so this you would modify that. Yeah, or move that one up so it looks different than that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we don't want to poach it completely. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, and I think starting with a stronger, like, what we want 
Yeah. <coughs> as an opening, what what are we saying? Yeah, it's not a very strong statement. It is no, it doesn't like, open with we're, that. We're going to Here's what we're asking of right. you. <laughs> Well, how about if we move that fourth paragraph up? Yeah. Yeah. We, the Rockingham Town School Board, yeah. I don't know if resolve or request that our elected officials. Yeah, my request. And get rid of therefore. Start of the sentence. As far as I'm concerned, you three are welcome to speak up on this if you have any feedback, input. If you want target training. Or Just for the first mm. If you share that with us, we can see it as you type. Uh, oh. Y you can. We can. We can. Oh, yeah. Can you see what yeah. I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, you have to go into the drive to see it. Oh. Because I have a view Instead only. Of the so, are you able to see? I'm able to see. We can't make edits. No. It's well, view only. <laughs> <laughs> I can mix that if you want. I was trying to get rid of Brattleboro in the, in the top part there. Yeah. And take the rocking. I'm like, no, what's going on? So, so now it says, therefore, uh, yeah, get, get, get rid of it. We, it says we. We, the Rockingham Town School, Board request that our electric officials in the Vermont House and Senate pass common sense gun violence prevention legislation that is now pending and that Governor Scott sign such legislation into law to take effect immediately. See, Karen can edit it. Yeah, yeah we can she has special it. privileges. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this going in there. Yeah. So, yeah. Mess with it. No. Do we? There's we don't really need <laughs> that as need you're that undoubtedly aware, no. right? No. Okay. I, that next paragraph is a nice paragraph. Yeah. Well, in the third paragraph, it's just mentioning that specific mm -hmm. in relation to the Parkland shooting. Mm -hmm. So it's stated yeah. more as a fact. I don't know about, I almost would, I guess, oh, referencing that one, but you know, ongoing tragedies as opposed to yeah. maybe even stating that specific mm -hmm. one, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because there's even been one since. Yeah. So. so, and yeah, that's the recent. Tragedies. Maybe just leave it at that. The recent tragedies have showed us. Look at that, it's Karen. battling now. Karen. <laughs> 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 yeah, you gotta watch out for it. Should it be shown us instead of showed us? Mm. I think we just have shown. I think we do want to express some literacy if we're writing from the school board to the governor. <laughs> Have done showed us. <laughs> that done showed us. <laughs> Can't get that. Well, 
this might be where you actually mention the names of the bills. Mm -hmm. um, And then they did a nice job. Of they outlined the issues, which I kind yeah. of like, because the bills, you know, they make change. It's it. We could put in here um, at this time. about that semi-automatic rifle. No, I don't, I don't care about that statement either. Are you guys in the next paragraph? Yeah. I wouldn't want to argue with somebody about what's a military style no. semi-automatic. That's kind of how I feel too. My definition would be if you wouldn't carry it deer hunting, why do you need it? That's just me. Uh, and I don't know about the states I've for guns. I've never sentence. heard of it, so. state database that will share information on firearms, law enforcement efforts, and supplement federal NICS databases. New multi-state coalition will trace and intercept firearms to start with the stop flow of out-of-state guns. Includes Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. It's kind of hard to argue. since these actions are long overdue. Mm -hmm. We need to drag up the past. about spelling Kristen's name. <laughs> I always, even though you don't pronounce it, Swart Wout. I guess the second W in there. Even though you, you don't pronounce it. it. You got it right? Yep. Now can we sign Kristen's name without her being here? She's on board. 
My guess is she's okay with it. <laughs> We need to change the who it's copied to. Yeah. Well, Rebecca Holcomb can definitely come off the list. <coughs> well, our representatives, right, need to get on. Yeah. Oh, they don't have someone yet. Her resume, she just finished. She finished Friday or today? Friday. 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 Well, she finished Friday. So yeah. it's all oh, right. Oh, there's an update. There's an update. There's an update. But maybe that on there. Jeanette White and Becca Bale are correct. correct. Mm -hmm. um, I would think, you know, maybe instead of all these people here, I'm going to want to send it to the. Speaker of the House and the um, Senate Pro Town. That's on the top. Oh, okay. There they are. Yep. So that's what it's doing that's that these people just copied. Do we need a motion to send this, or? Oh, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. We do. Want to first motion? Sure. <laughs> motion to sign the resolution as we drafted it. Any further discussion? All in favor of sending the letter as drafted here today? On to the parties? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. You want to change the title of the document to a copy of Brown? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, will your office send this, or do you need one of us to? No, I can do it. <coughs> Should I just put state legislature in the motion? Who's it going to? Do you need like specific? It's going to Governor Phil Scott, Governor Speaker Scott. Mitzi Johnson, and Pro Tem. has anything else on our new business we don't have any appointments director's comments Margo I'm Ed. welcome Ed I did get a message from the other person who said I'm sorry I was on been on family vacation but I will get a letter out if you're still interested I said yes I'm still interested well yeah we have an open spot. so next time we need to do Hopefully, he, I said I will, I will continue to pressure you for the next couple of weeks to get your letter in. Date of next board meeting, May 7th, 2018 at 6.30? No, 5.30. 5.30. So we have to update that. No. Yeah, that's a mistake. And Sexton Trooper? Sure. Okay. 
Goal setting. Goal setting. <laughs> goal setting. <laughs> topic of that, the primary topic of that meeting will be goal setting. Unless there's anything else anyone wants to hang out for, I would gladly adjourn. I'd like to just remind everybody about the Rockingham 5K this Saturday morning. Come over to Central, register, sign up and run. Or come and volunteer or just cheer on the runners. So, and hopefully we'll have good weather. Yeah. I saw the sign Fourth on the front with the countdown. I saw a really fancy sign somewhere for it. I was surprised with the front. Yeah, yeah, we've got somewhere. some around town. Yeah. We've been up in the world. <laughs> Anyone else? For concerts Thursday night at the high school, 6 30. Spring fling? And Karen, do you have something? I do not. Oh. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> this meeting is now officially adjourned.